after a morning of what felt like chasing phantom lions roaring all around us, we've got a real, actual lion in the flesh. And not only has he not crossed out of our property, he gave us all the slip because he started walking in the direction of the boundary and then lay down, as male lions so often do. So we're very, very fortunate in that. It seems as though, for now, our lion is going to stay on Juma. Hey, boy. And if we're really fortunate, because it's still quite cool this morning, he might even give us a roar, because the other lions have been calling all morning. Those are the ones I've been trying to find. I'm hoping he might decide to participate in that. Our sense on I nearly disappeared off your screen for a long time, because remember how I said I have to sit on blankets to see over the bonnet, or the front of the vehicle? Well, I didn't see, in the long grass, a very large hole on my way in to get to him, and we very nearly did not come out of said very large hole. But we did, with actually minimal effort, just some serious squeezing between some broken trees. And there we go, worth any challenge for a sight like this first thing in the morning. Looks like Mfumo to me, from what I can see. So one of the members of the Birmingham Boys, the dominant male lion coalition of this area. And there's something about seeing, oh, all things live, I suppose. But there's something about seeing male lions live that is just fantastic. The unpredictability of the way in which your morning can go. He's listening to something. I'm not sure what it is, but there's something that's caught his attention to the west and to the south of us. And it could be that that's where the rest of the lions are. Perhaps the females are in that direction. Or he could be listening to the rest of his coalition calling. Just letting everybody know where they are. That was quite an interesting experience. Right, on that note, while we look at our big mail line, don't forget to send through your questions using the hashtag SafariLive on Twitter. Julia, there is a question I should know the answer to. Good morning to you. Julia would like to know what the average decimal count is for a lion's roar. Should be relatively easy and quick to find out, should it not? We should be able to find out relatively quickly. I can tell you from experience rather than with figures. Oh, we almost thought about it there. Oh, mister. I can tell you from experience that a lion roaring next to the vehicle is a bone shattering, not shattering, but a bone shaking experience. The entire vehicle shakes. You can feel it vibrating in your chest. It is an enormously powerful sound. If I had to guess, and I'm going to ask those of you with Google to Google it for me, if I had to guess, I'd put it over a hundred decibels. He's listening to the vehicles go past, but every now and again it looks like he might just think about it. Come on, boy, one more before it gets too warm and you want to hide in the shade. But yes, send through how exactly how loud a lion's roar is in decibels, and you can do that on hashtag a safari live on Twitter. I guess I should absolutely know the answer to that, but I don't tend to think of it in those terms. I just think because it's such an awesome experience, I haven't thought about it in, in, in a way that we can actually quantify. But of course you can. It's a sound. It makes total sense. Listening all around him. Not fully asleep yet. Now Val, a safari girl, lovely to have you on board and good morning. Val, you want to know how long a lion can go without food. It very much depends upon the condition of the lion itself. And what I mean by that is a big male lion will be able to survive longer than a six-month-old cub. 
but I would guess that your average male, or your average lion, could probably go for around about three weeks. That would put them in a very, very bad state. Their metabolisms work fast. You've seen how quickly, when we've sat with them and they've gorged themselves to the point that they're so bloated they can barely move on whatever they happen to be eating. And then two days later, they are sleek and slim. So it, their metabolisms do work quickly. And bear in mind, because they can't exactly pop down to the grocery store, once they start to get weak from a lack of food, it's going to get harder and harder for them to actually catch food. So that is also a compounding factor. So I'm not sure exactly how long it would be. It's where the social aspect of lions is also extremely helpful. Just wave hello to some of the other guests arriving. Oh, there we go, there we go, he's thinking about it. He's d there we go, there we go, come on, come on, he's thinking about it. Oh, come on, boy. He's listening to the other male lions roaring somewhere. I can't hear them, but he can. He's almost responding, I don't know why he's not quiet. Yes, clean your mane instead. At least your scars have all healed up nicely. Okay, so while our male lion makes up his mind, it gives us an opportunity to answer Mercedes's question, which is how many lion families live in Juma? Sorry, I keep going silent because I keep hoping he's going to give us a demonstration quickly. Mercedes, <coughs> on Juma itself, okay, let, let's, go into, let's go into describing lions in general first. So what will happen is you get prides with territories, and prides being made up of their, the females and their cubs, and then you get either a, a solitary male or a group of males known as a coalition. And basically what will happen is the prides have their own territories, and then the males will have territories that will encompass the territories of several different prides. And that means that they're not always with the females, they're constantly patrolling, and they move about uh, between the females as well. Whenever there happens to be a female in estrus, or perhaps just to join them for Sunday dinner. Uh, within Juma itself, Juma's actually quite small, but it forms, not, not small small, I just mean in, the, in terms of the scale of this entire reserve. And it actually is the meeting point of two different Lion Prides territories, and that is the Styx Pride, and so they have the three females and their cubs, and the Nkuhuma Pride, which is the five females and their six cubs. And then the Birmingham boy is controlling this entire territory. But bear in mind that we don't just drive on Juma. We drive on places called Arethusa, Cheetah Plains, Chitwa Chitwa, so we've got quite an expansive traverse area, all of which essentially is dominated by the Birmingham boys, and most of which uh, is the area that we see the Inkuhumas in, or the sticks. So the Inkuhumas to the north and the sticks to the south. We're just, just missing out on seeing another pride of lions called the Torchwood Pride, and every now and again we see the Tsalala Pride. Ellen and many others, thank you very much for sending through the decibel question, or the answer to the decibel question. 114 decibels, so at least I guessed in the right range. Oh, there we go. Ambient right up. It's a wussy wall. Come on. Oh. Come on, boy. You could do better than that. That was about 10 decibels. If that. Mm, guys. Guys, where are you? That's a contact call. That's a warm-up to the main event. He's going to roar again. Aren't you, my boy? So 114 decibels at one meter. That's impressive. And he's 
I stay positive he's going to give us a demonstration once he's finished scratching his elbow and licking his lips. Frozen mid scratch, listening. You're going to have to call harder than that, mister. Oh, other boys are far away. Michael, you want to know why his mane isn't as full as that of the others? You want to know if it's just, if he's just younger or if he, it is genetic in some way? Mm, a combination of the two. Because I've always found Mfumo to be quite dominant in the Birmingham Boy Coalition. But that's difficult to say for certain because it changes constantly and it's not just about size or age, it's about attitude as well. But he's often the one with the most injuries around his face. But absolutely, in Sugu, Nena, their manes are both fuller than that of Mfumo. I think he probably is a little bit younger. And there's also always a slight genetic factor, although each of the Birmingham boys is related to each other. So it's not a huge factor in it. And I mean, with me, it's like watching children grow up. Oh, it sounds as though James has got an unusual bird. We'll be right back here if he starts roaring, but go and have a look before it disappears. <laughs> 